So we have an infinite series, and we're being asked if it converges or diverges. So it's being raised to the nth power, so we'll use what's called the root test. So the root test basically says if you take the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of a sub n, and you get L, then one of three things happens. If L is less than 1, then your series actually converges. It converges absolutely, but I didn't write that down because it's not relevant in this problem. If it's bigger than 1, then the series diverges. And if it's equal to 1, well, the test is inconclusive, so we have no information. So how do you know when to use the root test? Well, whenever you see something being raised to the nth power, uh, try the root test. I mean, it usually will work. So in this problem, our a sub n is this right here. It's already positive, so we don't have to worry about the absolute value. So let's go ahead and do it. We'll take the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root, giant root here, of 4n plus 3 divided by 2n plus 1. And this is all being raised to the nth power. When you take the nth root of something being raised to the nth power, uh, it goes away. So you just get the limit as n approaches infinity of 4n plus 3 divided by 2n plus 1. Now here what you do is you look at the degrees. So they match. They're the same. They're both 1s. So the answer is 4 over 2. So you get 2. That's bigger than 1. So it diverges by the root test. And that's it. Maybe let's do one more. Why not? So let's try this one. So the question is, converges or diverges? And let's look at the sum as n runs from 1 to infinity of 3n squared plus 5 over 7n squared plus 6, all being raised to the nth power. So again, we have something that's being raised to the nth power. So this is a good candidate for the root test. In this example, this whole thing here is a sub n. Again, it's positive, so we don't have to worry about the absolute value. So we'll take the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of that thing. So 3n squared plus 5 divided by 7n squared plus 6, all being raised to the nth power. So when you take the nth root of something being raised to the nth power, it goes away. So you just get 3n squared plus 5 over 7n squared plus 6. So here we get, uh, again, they match. So it's 3 over 7. That's less than 1. In this case, it converges by the root test. So we saw an example of where it diverges. We saw an example of where it converges. Um, let's do one more. Let's do one more. So again, the question is the same converges or diverges. Just making these up. These are really, really easy to, to make up. Let's go from 1 to infinity. Let's try n squared plus 5 over n squared plus 7. And this is being raised to the nth power. Okay. So in this case, if we use the root test, our a sub n is this thing right here. This is our a sub n. And let's do it. We'll take the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of n squared plus 5 divided by n squared plus 7. And this is all being raised to the nth power. As before, the n's go away. So you get the limit as n approaches infinity of n squared plus 5 over n squared plus 7. Here you have a 1. Here you have a 1. These match. So the answer is 1 over 1. 
which is 1. So in this case, the root test is inconclusive. Inconclusive. So no info via the root test. So to recap, in the first example, we did L was 2. That's bigger than 1, so it diverged. In the second example, L was 3 over 7. That's less than 1, so it converged. And in the last example, we got L equals 1. There's our L. And when L is equal to 1, the root test is inconclusive. I hope this helps.